You are now listening to one of the hottest podcasts out, the Hood Geniuses Podcast, with host Ms. 100, Lady T. This is Lady T. And this is Ms. 100. We are the Hood Geniuses Podcast, and this is episode 28. We have with us Maxan Golden. I mean, Gooden. I'm sorry about that. We're going to keep this going, though. Um, she is the founder and director of Women of Valor 74, and it's a mentoring ship program for young women in the ages of 12 to 18, right? Okay. Yeah, so we're going to um, start this episode, and I'm going to give the mic to Maxan and um, explain to the people out there about your mentoring program. Hi, everybody. So basically, um, my mentoring program um, is called Women of Valor. Um, I mentor young girls between the ages of 12 and 18. Um, Basically, um, we meet twice a month, um, two Saturdays a month. Um, We basically do one Saturday, we do girl talk, which is when we just sit down and we talk about um, events that have happened during the week or whatever they feel like talking about. The other Saturday will consist of um, a workshop um, and the workshops are just different things that um, the girls they are facing. I will have a speaker come in, um, talk about maybe finances, um, loving yourself, um, sex trafficking and um, things like that. Oh, okay. Um, so, let me, you know, first let you know, thank you for coming on the Hood Geniuses Podcast. You know, this is definitely um, a great thing because you actually, you know, for me reading your bio, you ap- actually represents everything about what the Hood, Hood Geniuses Podcast represents as far as with, for, for many people that don't know. Um, this was started because we wanted to give people that's from the urban setting, the AKA the hood, a platform, whether they have a business, mentoring programs, artists, rapper, singer, model, DJ, you know, just to have open conversations and to promote their brand or, you know, their programs and stuff like that, because there are a bunch of intelligent geniuses that grew up in the hood and people fail to realize because that stigma that we always get you know and i'm talking about black people you know the stigma of all the negativity drug dealers you know kids you know coming from broken homes and all that kind of stuff like that but this podcast is to provide the opposite of what's what is known you know what i mean but i'm gonna start this off by saying well by asking you you born and raised in Philadelphia, right? Yes, that's correct. Born and raised in Philadelphia. Um, I lived um, like six in Cayuga. We moved from there to um, near 22nd and Lehigh uh, with my mom. I went to Whale Penn High School. Um, and now I'm, I'm currently residing in the Northeast. Oh, okay. So you're a North Philly chick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> no. Now, you know, you know, Lady T... Lady T represents Northside, you know. I represent West Philly. Now, when I was coming up, you know, it always was like, you know, certain chicks, you know, when you, you know, you know, the homies would say, "Yo, Dan, who, you know, where your chick from?" You'd be like, "Oh, Dan, you know, she, she from Mount Airy." Then they'll say, "Oh, she a little bougie, John, or whatever," because you know the different sections of Philly. For those who don't know, that's not from Philly, because we do have less listeners from, you know, internationally now. You know, I check them stats, yeah. but uh, anyway, <laughs> let me get back to what I was saying. But coming up, you, you always know. It was like, even with the dudes, you know what I'm saying? The dudes from West Philly was hustlers and killers. You know, um, the boys from North, hustlers, keep it real, very down to earth. Same with the females. Most of the females from North was always the realest, down to earth. And you could just really have a good time with. Now, I don't, I never had a chick from Northeast. I didn't even go in Northeast. South Philly was known for females setting you up Set and up. robbing you, you know, you know what I'm saying? Um, Southwest, they was just grimy. Right. And that's for the men and the females. Um, 
I'm miss I'm missing uh what's this Germantown. Uh Germantown they was like shaky, you know uh, like kinda I don't know. It's kind of, what would you say, Lady T, about the different sections and stuff like that? You know what you you know that you know that I just want to jump into asking some questions. You know, <laughs> I'm I'm really excited um, because you know Lady T is always with the fist up. You know the Tupac of the show, mm-hmm. and it's just great to have someone on here that's positive, a black woman that's positive, and is doing things and giving back to the community, which we rarely have. So I'm just really excited about that. Really Thank excited. You. Yeah, because you know, really, it's not a lot of people doing enough for the city. You know, they bitch and complain about what's needed, but we have to have action. You know, all the meeting and meeting and talking and we need this, need that. Nah, you have to create action to have progression. Mm -hmm. And what I like that Ms. Gooden is doing is all her actions is turning into progression. You know, or I remember when you, you you first started, you know, mentioning this to me, and I was like, "Damn, you got that going on? That's what's up!" And you got the ball rolling. Um, but I want to ask you this question: How has growing up in an urban setting shaped your worldview and you know, mold you as a person? <sighs> That's a good question. Um, well. <sighs> Let's just say growing up, my childhood was not the best. Um, My mom did the best that she could do in raising me. Um, But of course, as we know, sometimes there are um, generational, I call them generational curses, where um, because your parent was raised a certain way, they tend to raise you the same way. And sometimes that way is not always the best way. Um, For some reason outside of that, I just... um, it was implanted in me just to want more, um, to see outside of where I grew up at, um, to see outside of where I lived at, to see outside of the family I was born into. Um, and so in using that and, and, and just, um, just wanting to reach out to young girls that are in the quote unquote hood, um, to, to give them something, to let them know that just because you're in a certain place doesn't mean you have to conform to that place. Um, if you have a vision for yourself, then you are able to achieve that vision. Um, I am 43 years old. And when I tell you, I'm still striving towards visions for myself, which means it doesn't matter how old you are. If you have a vision, you keep pushing until you get there. Um, but I do know a lot of times these young girls don't have a mentor or don't, they know where they want to be or where they want to get to, but they just don't know how to get there. So sometimes it just takes that one person to, um, give them the exact steps to get there. Okay. Yeah. You know, that's important. You know, everything that you said with your answer, very important and sticking on to your visions that you have and reaching them goals don't matter the age. Because, you know, some people, you know, their vision might be only, you know, selling drugs for a living, you know, and you already know where that ends up. We did an episode about that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? But I'm going to go on to the next um, question. Uh, I was reading your bio and... I don't know if this was in your bio or if it was on your Instagram. Uh, um, I said, um, I see you had a, a BS in psychology. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, so working in behavior health, is that like your background? Um, yes. I did, mm-hmm. case, I did case management for seven years, um, but I got tired of doing it. Because, of course, as we know, it's you only could go but so far doing it. So um, that's why this mentoring program was, was really important in getting started because I needed to get to the inside of um, young women and not just be in a work environment doing case management where you just doing a job and not really going deep as to why um, these people or young women are in these circumstances. You know what? I knew somebody that did that. And um, they would say <clears throat> they felt as though they wasted their schooling and their loan money to go to school for. No, for real. That's real. That's real. Real talk. And they felt like they was just went to school to push fucking papers. 
when you mentioned that you said you was doing um, case management, case management, which you know it, it is actually pushing papers and <laughs> chasing yes. people down yes. to make sure they go into their programs or to tell them about different programs and referrals and stuff, this and that. It could be a nuisance. Right. You know, especially if you was working in the herb setting. You was yes. work okay. Yeah, that's you know, you know, you know mm-hmm. I work in the medical field, Lady T works in the medical field. They just want their medicine and their utility forms filled out. You know what I'm saying? All that other stuff, chasing them down to get their x ray or their back pain and all. They ain't trying to hear all that. They just want the handouts and keep it moving. But um, I'm going to the next question. But let me okay, okay. But my, to be honest, that's true with the case management. You just pushing papers and stuff like that. But you got to have a bigger vision because unfortunately, in this world you got to have that paper to back you up to give you credibility so my whole point of and i'm not done schooling yet because my vision is to have my own counseling place for young women where it's mine so i can go as deep as i want to you know what i mean run it how i want to so that's my vision So I think sometimes getting the degree is not in vain. It just depends on what you want to do with it. And so for my vision, it ain't case management. That's what I started out with, but that's not my vision to do. So it's to carry it a little further. Yeah, and you know what you just said as far as um, you want to have your own counseling center like that. Now, I'm not a racist, but I'm about to say some real shit, right? The, The way I see it now... And especially, you know, the things that's going on with Lady Lady T's son, teachers, and, and, and my daughter, teachers. At this point, I only want my daughter, myself, I want black people to, <laughs> to school me. You know what I'm saying? I want a black doctor. I want people that look like me. To pass off my medicine, to pass off my results, to to teach my daughter. Because what's happening is it's like a um, there is a difference. They like to say, "Oh, it's just a human race." No, that's not true. You know what I'm saying? There is in America only see black and white. You know, let's let's put that out there. But going back to what you said, that's needed because these young women they need to see another woman that's helping them because a lot of these young women feel like they ain't have no help you know they come from broken homes getting disrespected by their parent you know mother or father people different people in the family then they go out here and walk these streets look at these losers out here in the streets you know pants hanging off they ass Trying to holler at them. You know what I'm saying? Getting disrespected all day. So they feel not loved. So they need that individual in their life, such as you, to actually provide that positive reinforcement, which is a great thing that you're doing. Lady T, I see you over there. You you know what I'm saying? You you can't wait to get out your words, you know what I'm saying? I know it. I know it. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it short and I'm not gonna be long winded. <laughs> Uh, I don't want to keep repeating myself, but I'm very happy and excited to have you here. Thank you. Um, also, reading your bio, I got a little emotional, you know, because it touched home, you know, and mm-hmm. that's real talk. Mm-hmm. Um, I said I was going to do this, but hold it do back. It. I'm not going to do it. Okay. <laughs> um, I just want to know, um, how do you find the strength? Where do you find the strength? Oh, Juggling three jobs, because you have three jobs. You're a full-time mom, mm-hmm. you're working, mm-hmm. and you're mentoring. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not to mention I have temporary custody of nieces as well. So, so four. <laughs> so four. I just no. need it. Let, uh, me, wait, but let me just get a cape out. <laughs> Wonder Woman came out last week, but we got the real Wonder Woman sitting right here. Okay. She killed the box office, but we, we killing it right here on Hood Geniuses right now. Okay. Yeah. Wonder Woman, please. Oh, Who? Maxine Gooden. That's what I'm talking about. And cheers to you, baby. Cheers to you, baby. Oh, goodness. Thank you. I'm, 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 listen. Um, listen. I'm very spiritual. Um, and so God gives me the strength to do what I am doing. Um, 
it's like it's 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 a passion that has always been in me for years. 